you to this is Southern Purple One, and I am so very grateful that we have the Second Amendment. We have the ability to own firearms, the ability to protect our families during uh, uh, a crisis, and that crisis could be a mugger, somebody breaks in your house, or in the case of Israel, uh, they had armed uh, terrorists, armed uh, soldiers outside their doors, and they had to hide and cower in their safe rooms. A lot of them don't have safe rooms, um, so they had no place to go. Uh, I was wondering why I kept hearing on the news coverage where people were calling, you know, the police, calling anyone, could not have any response from military or the police. I said, why don't they deal with this? My idea was Israel because I've seen a lot of pictures. I had a buddy go there and visited like 25 years ago. Uh, a long time ago, he took a trip there and visited Israel, and he said, you know, a lot of people were carrying rifles around. Uh, and that was, I guess, right after the, well, it was way after the 1973 war. But that's what I envisioned for Israel. In Israel, hey, you smart people, you're surrounded by millions of people that want, want you dead. You would let your citizens and civilians have firearms to protect themselves. So I could not believe uh, we didn't see tons of uh, pictures and videos of average people trying to protect themselves. And then I find out that Israel uh, doesn't trust their citizens. Don't do, they basically do not love them. That's the bottom line. They don't care about them because anyone that cared for another person would make sure they had the means to defend themselves. So my image of Israel's government has been shaken. Um, they don't trust their people. I had, sent some emails with a gentleman that actually summarized it really well. And so I'm going to use his summary. Um, when he sent me the summary, I was like, what the heck? No way. And then I started to do research on it. It was like, holy moly, this is true. Uh, totally disgusted with the government of Israel. Uh, totally disgusted with the people, of, the Jewish people in Israel. Why wouldn't you demand the ability to, to have self-defense? You are surrounded by millions of people. So I don't want to say, you know, you, you sort of could have, could have prevented some of the kidnapping, some of the death could have been prevented. Because I'm just going to look at my neighborhood here, just my neighborhood. Um, I think they say roughly 30% of Americans armed. My neighborhood uh, in the country, we're 95, 100 probably. And you could probably put uh, one of those evil AR-15s in about, they're probably in about 70% of the homes around here. Maybe a little bit less because some people prefer an AK. Some people prefer another weapon system. We are heavily, heavily, heavily armed out here. I am so grateful. I'm in a country that allows me to protect my family. I'm so grateful. I have neighbors uh, that are equally prepared um, we might have a 30 minute wait for a deputy sheriff out here. If he's on the other side of the county up in my area, it could be, if he's on another call, they might have to bring another officer from farther away. Um, so I'm very happy where I'm located. Uh, if that occurred in my neighborhood, we would have many, many well-armed, well-equipped, uh, guys that have the ability to protect their families and have the, uh, the, the moral uh, requirement to say, hey, my family is not going to be put in jeopardy. Let me get into it and show you that the Israeli government does not care about their people. Let me read this for you. Gun ownership is very str has very strict in Israel. No one may own or carry a gun without showing a legitimate reason to do so. The application for a firearms license must be a citizen or a permanent resident of Israel who has lived in Israel for the past three years, years or had completed his national military service. Must be a law-abiding citizen with no criminal record. A person who has served in the IDF could receive a firearm license in Israel as of the age of 18, but not all soldiers who have combat experience meet the criteria to apply for a private license. And the majority of Israel who serve in the military are not eligible. In fact, only a minority of soldiers who have been in elite commando infantry type units are allowed to apply for a privately held weapon. A special permit is required by the Firearms Licensing Department, which is under the National Security Ministry. The permit must have the approval of law enforcement, including information about the owner and the gun type. 
it can still be disapproved. Usually, if approved, citizens are allowed to hold a pistol and a limit of 50 rounds. Must have a health de declaration form from the physician showing medical approval of mental and physical health. Attach the application. The application must undergo a required weapons training every 18 months once a license is obtained. And continuous training requirements. There are strong rules regarding weapon storage. Uh, most don't follow through with all these requirements to get their final permit. Um, I think I read 2%. I also read 2.6% of Israel or Jewish people in Israel, citizens of Israel, have the permit and have a firearm. Uh, I also read where they were only allowed to own a pistol, not a rifle. Now, I am waiting for some good friends and some good people that are in Israel to send me an email. If, if what I'm putting out is wrong, um, what I have been reading, it is super strict. That's just the bottom line. Super strict. A lot of people don't have them. Uh, unbelievable that my vision of Israel was from 25 years ago where people did carry rifles around. Uh, my buddy, when he visited, he said, yeah, people had rifles. They were carrying them around to protect themselves. And now uh, the government of Israel doesn't love their people. That's just the bottom line. If you do not trust your people, you trust the citizens of your country uh, to have a legitimate weapon, a way to protect themselves, uh, and, and it's just more insanity when you're surrounded by millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people that want your country destroyed, your nation destroyed, want uh, you destroyed as evidence of what happened uh, of women and children and kids uh, being taken across the border. Um, not all of this could have been stopped for sure, but a lot of this could have been stopped if the average citizen had access to weapons, and did not have to rely on the military or the police. Uh, as I understand, they're still trying to find more of the uh, insurgency, the terrorists that have come across the border. Uh, it's ongoing. Uh, this is changing Israel for sure. Um, now they're going to get ready to go into Gaza as soon as they secure the border. Um, Hezbollah is not doing anything. And I think Hezbollah is not doing anything because they're going to wait till Israel goes into Gaza. They can then use photographs of, of, you know, a lot of civilians being killed. And then they say, well, we're justifying our movement into the north because Israel is slaughtering uh, civilians down there. And any type of movement into Gaza is going to cause widespread death to the citizens of Gaza. Uh, that's just a given with the nature of warfare. So continue to prep, continue to prepare yourself, and I am so thankful for our Second Amendment rights. We need to make sure in this country we'll never lose it, and we fight very hard for it. So if you haven't been fighting for the Second Amendment, if you have not been supporting organizations that uh, uh, fight for us every day, you need to. You are, you are mistaken. You need to be in the fight protecting our Second Amendment. Thanks for watching.